welcome Dr. Robert Schrott and Dr. Kalita Hai Santiago, who will be presenting today. Uh, Dr. Hai Santiago is a member of the Healthy Smile, Happy Child Intersectoral Dental Health Promotion Group and the Oral Health Dental Consultant with Manitoba Health and Shared Health. She's also the chair of the Federal, Provincial, and Territorial Dental Working Group. Uh, her dental career has primarily focused on community dental public health. Uh, welcome, Dr. Schroet. Dr. Schroet's a co-lead for the Healthy Smile, Happy Child um, um, uh, group, and he is also a clinician scientist and professor in the Rady Faculty of Health Sciences at the University of Manitoba. He's the Provincial Medical Representative in Pediatric Dentistry with Shared Health, and his research focuses on early childhood oral health and the epidemiology of early childhood caries in at-risk populations. And I also want to thank our two panelists, Marika Nadeau and Nadine Lacroix, for agreeing to be here to answer questions for us. They are members of the Dental, Task, Dental Care Task Force at Health Canada. So um, that's a very long introduction. And uh, uh, Dr. Schroed, if you want to begin, we'll... I'm taking this one, Daniela. So oh, OK, sure. OK. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to our presentation. Uh, so we would like to acknowledge that the University of Manitoba campuses are located on the original lands of the Ashinabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and on the homeland of Métis Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. So we'll just uh, dive right in, uh, discussing about the Government of Canada's new interim Canadian dental benefit, which is available for eligible families who have children under the age of 12 years old, have an adjusted net family income of less than $90,000. Um, they do not have access to private uh, dental insurance, including employer-based insurance. Uh, they have or will have out-of-pocket dental care expenses during uh, the debt benefit periods. Uh, they have also filed last year's income tax return. Um, they are in receipt of the Canadian child benefit for each eligible child. And also that families meeting the above uh, eligibility, eligibility criteria, that they will indeed uh, have or incur out-of-pocket dental care expenses that have not been fully reimbursed under another federal, provincial, ter or territorial government program. These people, these families can also apply. Next slide, please. So what are the uh, Canadian Dental Benefit or CDB periods? There are two benefit periods for the interim Canadian Dental Benefit. And these eligibility criteria are specific to the period when your child receives the dental care. So the period one is for October 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023. Um, so that allows people who haven't accessed it since October to uh, apply. And then the period two is from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024. And so the table just shows what, um, sorry, Bob, <laughs> just uh, based on your net, fam a net family, adjusted net family income, uh, what the families may receive per child. Next slide, Bob, thanks. So the additional payment, if costs are over $650, for the first period, which started on October 1st, 2022. Um, it opens on July 1st, 2023, so later this summer. If you only apply for one benefit period and your child's dental costs are over $650 in that period, you may meet the criteria for the additional payment. So the Interim Canada Dental Benefit can provide an additional payment for children who have dental costs more than $650 and $50 in one of the benefit periods. You will only meet the criteria for the additional payment if you are not applying for both benefit periods for that child. If you are eligible, the payment will be the same amount as you receive for the benefit period that you applied for. 
Um, so you can, you can check if you can get an additional payment for your child's dental care for either the first or second benefit period. So again, for both benefit periods, the earliest you comply is July 1st, 2023. A little confusing, but okay. Um, what are considered dental care services? Um, so any oral health service that is, that is a, uh, that a dentist, denturist, or dental hygienist is lawfully entitled to provide, which may include um, oral surgery, diagnostic services, any prevention services, restorative or fillings, endodontic services, periodontal, prosthodontic, and orthodontic services. The services can be provided uh, by the above oral health professionals in any setting where they are licensed um, to practice, and this includes a dental practice or office, independent dental hygienist practices, depending on which jurisdiction that you live in, uh, mobile and community clinics and places where those services are offered and, and or an oral health educational institution. In all cases, a receipt must be provided and provided by that provider. And those receipts must also be retained by families or guardians. Next slide. So thanks, Kalita. I'm there you going go, Bob. To take this the next two a few slides here. So, um, the issue of whether or not um, children who receive some public dental insurance and are they eligible for the Canada Dental Benefit? I created this grid um, and have shared it sort of with our Center for Community Oral Health team um, because there are children that we see in some of our community clinics, or you might see in your private practice, who may in the Manitoba context already receive employment and income assistance, or they may receive non-insured health benefits, or they may receive interim federal health. The issue though that we have to still keep in mind is that there may be children covered through EIA in Manitoba, but they may not necessarily qualify for the Canada Dental Benefit because their parents may not be Canadian citizens or permanent residents of Canada and are not qualified for the Canada Child Benefit. As well with the interim federal health, most of those children are from refugee families, but there are some instances where I have encountered children covered through IFH, but the parents are either uh, permanent residents or Canadian citizens and are receiving the Canada Child Benefit. So I put this grid together just to sort of help us think outside the boxes, how could we use these benefits? So I think we would definitely want um, to encourage all of our families uh, with kids in this age group who are covered through public insurance to see if they apply and encourage them. And our clinic staff roles would be, you know, to help inform parents about the benefit, to give them a handout or expose them to the QR code. And quite often we're putting that at reception uh, areas or in the dental operatories themselves. And then asking, I think the providers and staff, we should be asking if parents are aware if they've applied and you know if they need some assistance and what sort of, if they've received sort of what level. And so what I'm thinking is, you know, this, this CDB for kids who already have some um, public funds for dental care, it's really, I think, uh, is used as an enhancement to their existing dental care. So think about, you know, the child on EIA right now in Manitoba who's only permitted once a year for a dental exam, that you could theoretically use this Canada Dental Benefit to bring the child back for a more frequent recall, especially if they're at high risk for caries. So it could mean the six month recall is now a possibility because parents have funding or even more frequent. It could also, right now, these children are only entitled to one fluoride application Per, um, per year. Now we can actually maybe meet recommended, uh, recommended uh, guidance, um, clinical guidelines for fluoride varnish applications for at least twice a year or more. And as well, scaling is often a service. And I think many who are clinicians on this, uh, this uh, Zoom today are actually identifying more and more children under 12 who actually have calculus but right now it's not covered. The scaling is not covered through EIA um, and it's not covered through interim federal health. And again, this is a way that you could theoretically provide the services 
and the families have been supported to pay for those additional um, add-on care. As well, this could apply for sealants, uh, for silver diamine fluoride applications, although NIHB already covers SDF uh, for children, um, this could be used as well to uh, pay for space maintainers that may be denied by the current um, public uh, forms of insurance that the children may have. It could be for removable uh, dental appliances like crossbite correctors or mouth guards if we've got children who are playing uh, sports and we're worried about injuries um, to their teeth and mouths. And then as well, it could be used to uh, pay for additional restorative treatment that exceeds what some of these uh, public programs, what their caps are. As well for IFH, if the child is from a family that's receiving the Canada Child Benefit, it could be used to pay for the stainless steel crowns. As we know, IFH, one of their current limitations of their program is that they don't cover um, uh, stainless steel crowns, but they'll pay for a five surface amount. Um, radiographs as well could be uh, done, as well as more frequent specific exams than what's maybe permitted by the public insurance uh, schemes. Um, so uh, what families need to keep in mind, so you should be keeping um, receipts for six years. Now, some of the families I work with, some may actually move six times within a calendar year. So this is a bit of a challenge. So um, I think we can then just remind families that, you know, we do have records and maybe afterwards clinics, you know, parents lose receipts, clinics could always reissue uh, some receipts. Um, and then um, parents and guardians must ensure that their mailing address is up to date uh, with CRA. And then the CRA will contact the parent or guardian by mail if they need more information to validate eligibility. And the CRA uh, does not need to know if a child's dental appointment is rescheduled within the same benefit period unless they request that. So there's what CRA might request and the documents that are in, that must be included, including the name and address of the dental care provider. Um, and now I will just play a quick video. Let's see if this plays. Um, this is a video through uh, from uh, the government of Canada. Hello. I'm Kathleen from the Canada Revenue Agency. Welcome to the walkthrough of the new interim Canada Dental Benefit. Today, I will be demonstrating the application process in the CRA's My Account and showing you the information on Canada.ca to help you learn more about eligibility and how to get your payment quickly. Canadians looking to learn more about the Canada Dental Benefit can do so by searching Canada Dental Benefit on Canada.ca where they will find the following tools and information to help them to prepare to apply. Here, Canadians can find out who can apply, how much you can get, how to get ready to apply, and how to apply. In terms of who can apply, there's a, there's a dynamic checklist that's indicated here, and applicants, if they want to see if they're going to be eligible, will need to select each of the different criteria and be eligible for each in order to be able to eligible to apply. In terms of how much you can get, there's a table that's provided on this slide here that provides the information on a per income basis for each of the eligible children. And so this is the a bit of general information based on the, the family net income for each. Canadians can also estimate the amount for their personal benefit using, the, there's a tool to estimate the benefit amount. And so here they can indicate uh, information about their personal circumstance and see the amount to which they would be entitled through the tool that's here. In terms of getting ready to apply, a couple of key things to, to have in mind when you're getting ready to apply. First and foremost, you have to have filed your 2021 income taxes, you and any spouse or common law partner as well. If you have not filed your 2021 income tax return, you will be, you, you will be stopped um, in the process and you'll need to, um, you'll, you'll need to have filed it in terms of being an intern in order to be able to be eligible. 
I'll pause it there, but uh, oh. the uh, and so um, that's our video um, that exists uh, produced by um, the government. So feel free to review that in detail because um, they'll give you uh, and families important information. We do also want to uh, acknowledge that there are resources that have been produced in different languages, which really helps uh, some of our newcomer uh, and refugee populations um, and uh, available in Arabic, Chinese, uh, French, Hindi, Punjabi, Spanish, Tagalog, and Ukrainian. Um, thankfully, in Winnipeg for our community clinics, we also rely on shared health, the language um, language access interpreters, so they often help as well because many of our clients uh, do not uh, fall within uh, these languages um, and they need uh, interpretation services. So I'll turn it over to Kalita now. Thanks, Bob. So what are some of the questions that people may be um, asking? Great. Uh, number one, how will children benefit from this new proposed dental benefit? So the Government of Canada estimates that approximately 500,000 Canadian children under the age of 12 would have access to this program and would benefit from this targeted investment of $938 million. Uh, um, so I know that uh, as of December 16th, uh, 2022, that their uptake had been about, about 100,000 children. I'm sure it's more than that now. I know that Health Canada will be updating that uh, number in the next few weeks. And if children start seeing the dentist early in their lives, um, this can get them started on a, on a, a good pathway for good oral health, uh, you know, because we know that good oral health, you know, early on translates into good oral health, you know, into, the, into, your, into your lifespan. So what is the next stage of the program? The Interim Canada Dental Benefit is a start and allows children under the age of 12 years old to have access to dental care while their teeth and their gums are still developing, which is very important. And uh, again, important to maintaining good oral health into your, into your lifespan. And this Benefit is temporary, that's why it's called interim, and will be in place while the Government of Canada is working on the necessary steps to build a more comprehensive, longer term national dental care program. And uh, I do believe they are looking at uh, several vendors who will be helping facilitate um, this plan, this plan further down the line. And what are the administrative requirements when applying for the CDB? So to access this benefit, uh, qualifying families must uh, provide CRA with uh, proof of eligibility, such as their contact information for the dental service provider, the date of the appointment, and information related to their employer and spouse or partner related uh, to their benefit coverage. Uh, also, you know, testify or attest to that the child does not have access to private dental insurance and they will keep their receipts and that applicants can submit to receive this financial support ahead of appointments. And I think the video also is, is really good at laying that out as well, as you could see uh, for the first few minutes that uh, uh, Dr. Schultz showed. And when does the CDB start? Um, the application portal again launched on December 1st, 2022. And again, as pre previously mentioned, there are two benefit periods, uh, October 1st, 22, 2022 to June uh, 30th, 2023, and July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024. Um, sorry if we just keep going over this again, but it just, uh, it doesn't hurt to hear this information uh, uh, repetitively. Um, can a dental office apply on behalf of a patient? Uh, the point blank answer is uh, no, uh, but a dental office may be able to provide support for patients applying to this benefit, um, but ultimately parents or their legal guardians need to apply for this benefit on behalf of their, um, their own children. And some community-based dental public health clinics 
may consider navigators to assist families in applying. And again, the details on how to apply can be found on uh, canada.ca forward slash dental. And again, I think that benefit, uh, the video is very helpful. Will the CDB affect other federal income tested benefits? Uh, no, other benefits such as the Canada Workers Benefit, the Canadian Canada Child Benefit and the Goods and Services Tax Credit, tax credit will not be affected. And next question, would, will the benefit affect provincial income tested benefits? Um, the federal government is working with provincial and territorial governments on having the CDB fully exempt when determining eligibility and benefits amounts, amounts under social assistance and other income tested programs offered in the jurisdiction because programming varies quite a bit across Canada and in each jurisdiction. Uh, we look forward to finding out more about this as details uh, become more readily available. How will the government um, ensure that employers will not drop their current private dental care plans and have their employees access this new dental benefit program instead? Well, across Canada, dental associations have been quite vocal about the need for any federal dental care proposals to avoid disrupting access to care for Canadians with existing dental coverage, particularly through employer-sponsored uh, benefits dental benefits. And given the limited uh, nature of this interim in initiative, the key word being interim, and the eligibility criteria, um, we are hopeful that this will have limited, if you know, any impact in Canadians uh, with existing dental coverage. Next slide, thank you. So if I'm eligible for this benefit, and the dental cost is less than the amount allocated, do I keep the money or do I need to return the rest? Uh, no, applicants are not required to return any unused portions of the interim Canada, Canada dental benefit. Um, why are families able to keep the extra money even if the dental cost was less than the amount allocated? So the amount of the interim Canada dental benefit is based on average basic oral health care costs in Canada, including an initial exam, a set of x-rays, basic preventive care, and or a small amount of restorative work like a filling. It is not expected that the benefit will exceed the cost of care in most cases, and parents with any leftover funding can look to further supplement their child's oral health in other ways, for instance, with high quality toothbrushes, fluoride, toothpaste, and floss if they wish. And please note, parents and guardians must keep their dental receipts for, for six years in case the CRA Canada Revenue Agency contacts them in the future to validate eligibility. And what if a child's dental care costs are more than $650 in one year? It's a good question. Um, dental, dentists will perform the necessary dental services a child needs using the dental benefit as a partial payment with perhaps parents covering the additional costs. If you only apply for one benefit period, your child's dental costs are, and your child's dental costs are over $650 in that period, you may be eligible to get an additional payment for either the first or second benefit period. Uh, for both benefit periods, the earliest you can apply is July 1st, 2023, if you haven't already applied. And, should dental clinics and expect an increase in patient visits because of the Canada dental benefit? Considering that um, an estimated 500,000 children would benefit from this targeted investment, uh, we recommend you know, that offices and dent uh, the dentists and dental office staff be prepared to see an increase in requests for uh, pediatric visits. Um, that would be you know, the reasonable thing. And again, dental offices should continue to issue receipts for services rendered and uh, perhaps assist those patients if they need the receipts in the future. Okay, over to you, Bob. Thanks, Dr. High Santiago. Um, so I'll take the next little uh, section here, questions the general public may be asking, and they might be asking the dental providers or uh, dental reception staff. Um, so uh, you might be hearing some of these questions. 
So if I, if, uh, I have private uh, dental coverage for my child or children through my employer-sponsored benefit, can I still apply to use the proposed dental benefit to cover my co-payment, which is a significant amount? Um, the answer for that one is no. The government has stated that dental benefits available for children under 12 for families who um, don't have access to private dental insurance. And if my child needs braces or other major dental work that my private employer sponsored dental benefits do not cover, can I apply for this uh, proposed dental benefit to offset that cost? Again, the answer is no. So families who have private dental insurance, um, and it's even been mentioned that even people, families who maybe have declined employer sponsored insurance, but they had the opportunity to sign up for that type of insurance that they might be deemed ineligible for the Canada Dental Benefit because they did have it offered to them. Now we realize, you know, and I think we've raised this, this issue forward with um, some folks on the task force is that some families may have private insurance, but it might be very poor private insurance where some families may only have 600 or $1,000 for the entire family for dental care in the calendar year. So hopefully when the new um, permanent program is being planned, there'll be some considerations for that. So we'll be interested to see what Marika and Nadine might uh, have for us uh, there, as some of you may have questions. How long does it take to receive the dental benefit payment? So um, we have heard that um, it can uh, take up to five business days to receive the payment electronically through direct deposit. And we have had some families tell us that uh, within sort of three or five days of them applying online or by phone, they've actually received the, the money appears in their bank account. So that's nice to hear. Will parents or guardians only be able to apply for this dental benefit through an online portal? So that yes, there is an online portal, but for those who maybe there are some barriers um, with maybe lack of computer or maybe don't have a, a mobile phone and access to Wi-Fi, um, they, families can call the 1-800 number a Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And thankfully that's available as well on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, do you have access to the CDB if you already have access to a provincial a public dental care program? So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the first uh, section of slides, um, some children who are covered through um, provincial, territorial, or federal uh, public programs may be eligible for the interim Canada dental benefit uh, if they meet the uh, criteria, especially if they uh, receive, if they filled out their income tax and they already receive the Canada Child Benefit. Um, so again, um, for um, non-permanent residents, non-Canadians, um, they likely will not qualify for the Canada Dental Benefit at this stage. Um, so um, the next question here, if I have two children and one requires more treatment than the other, can I use both of their dental benefit amounts towards one? And just a reminder, the benefit is up to six fifty dollars per child, uh, which are meant to be used to cover the basic uh, treatment for each eligible child in the household. Again, you know, we are not giving guidance on what to do here, but from what the clarification we've received from Health Canada is that families will not have to return the funds. Um, so families may, we, we won't sort of advise one way or the other on this, but we have a feeling some families will probably use those funds to support another child. Um, and can I apply for the Canada Dental Benefit if I have access to federal, provincial, or territorial dental care plan? Um, and just, um, yes, again, um, if, if they meet the eligibility criteria that's set out, um, and so they can receive additional care through the Canada Dental Benefit. Uh, but families do need to go through the checklist and apply and see if they be, if they are eligible. Um, now, the last um, section here, I'm going to turn this over uh, to Dr. High Santiago, and we're going to go back and forth a little bit, um, and then we're going to have time for some questions uh, with uh, Marika and Nadine um, from Ottawa, uh, who are joining us today as panelists. Uh, over to you, Kalita. Thank you. 
So what have we been um, experiencing or what have we been seeing in dental public health settings? Uh, next slide, Bob. Thanks. So uh, parents and families that receive the Canada Child Benefit uh, have did receive a letter from CRA, which outlined um, that they may be eligible for the Canada Dental Benefit, but they uh, would need to you know, check the eligibility requirements and also uh, uh, check out the criteria. Some parents may not be reading the letter carefully enough and assume this letter qualifies them, qualifies their child for the benefit. And again, the family cannot apply for the interim benefit if the family has private dental insurance. Um, yeah, so some of your clients may have received this letter and just probably just needs clarifying with them as well. And another question that we, uh, you know, have been getting as well is I am from a working poor family and have private dental insurance, but it isn't a good, good it isn't a good plan. So, you know, not all dental plans are equal. Uh, some families may have private dental insurance from their employer, but perhaps it might be a maximum cap for all members of the family. For example, $1,000 per year total. Um, and unfortunately, these families do not qualify for, qualify for the interim benefit, even if their family income is uh, less than $90,000 because they do have a private plan. And over to you. Yeah, so this, this one came out uh, of discussions that some of us were having because as many know, many of us are interested in access to care for populations that don't frequently have good access to dental care. So here's a scenario. I live in a remote First Nations community that is fly-in access only, and we have limited or inconsistent dental care by a contract dentist with the Department of Indigenous Services Canada. So do I apply or do I not apply? So in this instance, parents can still apply for the Canada Dental Benefit, but I still think, and many of us have the opinion, but they may still have difficulty actually accessing additional oral health care for their child. Um, some of the contract dentists may only be providing treatment that is right now covered by the non-insured health benefits fee guide and maybe aren't going to deviate from them. And there's no mechanism for these contract dentists to additional bill for additional treatment because they don't take money directly from families because um, the billing is done through NIHB. So in this instance, you know, some have thought that, you know, parents may want to, to use the Canada Dental Benefit and make appointments for their child. So an additional recall or an additional, you know, um, um, care appointment for their child in another community if they do plan to leave their isolated fly-in only community uh, and are traveling maybe to another community for other reasons and maybe do that. Although the concern with that is then you have a child who's potentially seeing two different clinics, two different providers, and there might be differences in treatment approaches between that. So again, hopefully in the long, this is an interim program, hopefully um, the, the, this will be a consideration um, for a future sort of uh, Canada dental benefit for children. I'll turn this one back to Kalita. Sure. Uh, so another question. Um, is I received more funding for my child than what is actually needed. What do I do? Um, well, keep all the receipts for you, the oral health care that you received or whatever it was uh, from your dentist or your dental hygienist or whichever provider that you saw. Um, review the CRA uh, guidance. Um, you could, again, consider using leftover funds to purchase toothbrushes, high-quality toothbrushes, floss, and fluoridated toothpaste for your child as well. Thanks, Cleta. So this is one that we're experiencing um, in some of our community clinics right now. We've encouraged parents to apply for the Canada Dental Benefit, and now they've received the funds. But... Um, we've had some where we've recommended after visits and they've told us that they've applied and we've recommended more frequent recall exams for them instead of the once a year, twice a year because their child's at high risk for tooth decay is parents are telling the receptionist, I don't want to book more appointments for the child 
where they are saying, yeah, I have the benefit, but I actually don't want to pay for the care that's needed. Um, and that's happened a few times already now too, where they've received the benefit, we've encouraged and, and told the families how their child would benefit from additional prevention and some restorative care, but they've made the decision not to book and spend the money that they've received at this point in time. Um, and then here's another example, a father of a, an 11 year old who I followed for many years, who has, has had several uh, caries uh, problems. Um, when I mentioned the Canada Dental Benefit to him, he said that um, he doesn't want uh, additional uh, exams or checkups or cleanings and prevention for his child who's covered through EIA, but instead is trying to see if he can pool the money with other, um, like for other high-end services like orthodontics for the child. So this is where some, you know, ultimately it's the parent's decision. So these are, you know, some of the frustrations that we're experiencing. So we should continue to remind parents, you know, what the intent was of the Canada Dental Benefit, this interim benefit to improve access to care and obtaining regular oral health care will have positive benefits for the child. So do what you can. Um, there, I think the majority of families are agreeing um, and want to use the benefit for additional care for, for their children and the prevention, but you may have some families who um, are not willing, even though they've applied. So here's some other uh, things that I've experienced. So um, I use time in the clinic appointment to talk to parents about the Canada Dental Benefit. We have posters in the operatory that are laminated. We have handouts but I'm finding it takes me 10 minutes during some of these appointments to educate parents about the Canada Dental Benefit, to show them how to use the QR code. And that's again, time away from clinical care. Um, many families have language barriers that we work with, or maybe um, they have literacy issues. So we often rely on interpreters for dental visits. Um, and um, it's almost next to impossible to have them apply at home because they don't have an interpreter. And I've had some parents tell me through the use of an interpreter that they're going to rely on their 15-year-old child at home to apply for them online. The other thing we're finding is some of our clinics um, don't have public accessible Wi-Fi, which makes it difficult for the QR code to work. So again, when we're thinking about trying to be accessible, um, our, our public health clinics, our, our private practice clinics, having that free Wi-Fi for patients can make a world of difference in this instance. Um, the other issue is many of our uh, families that come to our uh, inner city or uh, community-based dental public health programs have not always filed their most recent income tax. And again, um, I know there's efforts underway with Know Your Benefits um, to try to get families the support that they need. And maybe through our community programs, we need to sort of work with these families um, so that they can uh, complete their income tax and then as well apply for this Canada Dental Benefit. And then here's one, one uh, newcomer family told me, the mom told me on Friday that she spent two hours on the phone with CRA um, on last Thursday to try to register her child. So, um, you know, that's two hours that this working poor mom is not working because she's on the phone. So again, she's lost two hours of income because of that. So Kalina, I'll turn this one over to you. Sure. See that we're hitting 15 minutes before the hour. So um, the public health clinic, this question has come up a uh, I'm sure here and, and other jurisdictions as well. So the public health clinic I take my children to normally charges $50 a visit as their fee. Now they have told me they want to charge me full fee, full dental fees because I applied for the benefit until the benefit um, amount is used up. Well, uh, you know, clinics should check with their organizations, uh, maybe their health body for legal counsel or for board guidance if you're not kind of sure what to do. Um, you know, if you're unsure, check with your provincial regulatory body that, that applies as well to dental professionals who may be on the call if you're needing some extra guidance. Uh, this guidance, uh, this practice should be discouraged because it may be considered unethical. The, the funds belong to uh, families and ultimately their children and not the dental offices. 
If clinics normally have a set fee for exempt clinic visits, the CDB should be used to pay for that set fee. Um, I think it behooves each clinic and each uh, provider to kind of consider what is uh, ethical and what is the, the right thing to do. And Talita, I forgot to mention on my earlier slide, just like some clinics, again, if, if the child is covered maybe by provincial social assistance like EIA and the office is billing EIA, but now with the Canada Dental Benefit, the child um, can get additional uh, care, it's really recommended that that uh, clinician or that clinic charge sort of the EIA equivalent sort of fee structure for that additional care, um, just that, you know, not to go from an EIA sort of fee guide to now a full fee right. guide. I, I think that's sort of what some of the guidance has been coming from, from some of the regulators, correct? Sure, yeah. And also that, you know, families are not obligated to disclose um, the funds that they have received. Okay, so I think that takes us to the next slide, which is our, you know, our references and uh, questions. And if you want to type your questions into the chat box, I think we already had a couple of other, had a couple of questions already. Yeah, we have, we have a couple here. So um, the first one was asking, in regards to endodontics, is, is the treatment provided by specialists covered as well? The example was endodontics. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to take that on sure. uh, if that makes sense. So thank you for the presentation and, and for the interest and, and partnership in, uh, in making, uh, in providing information on the Canada Dental Benefits. So it's really appreciated. So, uh, so uh, and I will, so I will answer that question, but I wanted to maybe give a few clarification on things that have been uh, discussed as well that, for which I took notes on. Um, so yeah, so the answer to the first question is uh, uh, treatment provided by specialists uh, covered or, or can, can parents apply uh, for the Canada D Dental Benefit for these uh, services through a specialist? The answer is yes, of course, keeping in mind if they meet all of the eligibility criteria and uh, that the oral health services are provided during the benefit period um, that was mentioned previously. Um, I'm on a roll, so I'll better just uh, continue if that's uh, okay. Uh, as far as the uh, eligibility criteria, so it is really uh, the intent of the interim uh, benefit, which is a temporary measure, is really uh, looking at people who have uh, who are uninsured, so do not have access to uh, private uh, dental insurances. So in the in the in the chat, there is a question: What if I have private? Uh, a, a private plan, I make less than 90,000, I've maxed out my insurance, can I apply for the benefit? The answer is no. Uh, it, it is really intended for people that do not have access to, uh, to financial support to pay for the oral health services of their child. Uh, another thing that I wanted, because I know it was in the deck and, and I just wanted to confirm that uh, uh, through our colleagues at um, uh, um, Economic Development Canada, uh, we have received from all provinces and territories confirmation that the Canada Dental Benefit was, will not be used uh, to calculate the uh, income, um, income, ben uh, income uh, to, uh, for social assistance programs. So all, all PTs have, have confirmed that the uh, dental benefit will, not, will be exempt. There's one province which is not monitored, but it has a, a nuance. Uh, but it will not it, it will not factor into the social assistance program calculation. Okay. Thank you. That's great. I I, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, I have a question. Um, yeah. Is there is there any awareness as to sort of I think Lita mentioned and I think you may have more up to date numbers that maybe about a hundred thousand families have applied so far. Um, is there any sort of, I get, is there tracking to go on um, to see, you know, which categories or, um, you know, of the ones who are applying is government, as far as you know, looking at how many of sort of the lower income of that, of that under 90,000 group are applying 
um, recognizing that maybe they have a little bit more uh, of a barrier to maybe applying for the benefit because maybe literacy issues, maybe not having a computer or a phone, et cetera. Uh, so thank you for the question. Uh, I'll just uh, like we rolled the, the interim uh, Canada dental benefit in December. So we're we're in our, our like last day of January. I can't believe it already, but two months. Uh, this said, we already received 113 uh, application uh, and we've served, we've helped 181,000 children uh, because you can have a family that has applied but has more than one child under 12. Um, and we are expecting to sort of uh, provide on Canada.ca slash dental these numbers uh, in early February uh, as an aggregate. And we are looking uh, uh, to uh, make sure that we're targeting uh, uh, the most vulnerable population through our outreach. And you, you may have heard or seen uh, some of our marketing campaign, but we will be reaching out to uh, um, community groups and, and social uh, assistant workers and all of that to, to continue to uh, our outreach. But like, again, like we're in two, two months in, uh, so there's still uh, definitely a, additional outreach to be done and it's through partnership uh, with, uh, with your organization and uh, the province that uh, we can make that happen as well. Okay. There's a few more questions there, yeah. I see. I think Dr. There's, Ruth has a question. How about we, we'll go, go with the first question. Sure, sure. Um, I have a family who declined health insurance because they couldn't afford the plan through their employer. Will future plans take low earning families into consideration for such instances? Uh, what I can say is we are looking at uh, a different uh, delivery uh, model and options for the long-term program. Uh, decisions are still uh, not confirmed or we are looking at how we can make sure that people who need uh, financial support get the, the financial support they, they, uh, they need for oral health. So I, I'm not able to confirm or deny, but we are looking at making it uh, as uh, fair and accessible as possible to those who need it. And the other, somebody asked if you could repeat the information regarding EIA family. So for those that apply for the Canada Dental Benefit, the, the, the up to $650 uh, will not be included as uh, an income when the, uh, they make the calculation on uh, social assistance programs uh, for which you're, you could be eligible or families would be eligible. Um, so that amount, the 650 would be exempt for that calculation. Okay, and then another question, um, the letter that was sent out that, that Bob had on the one slide, um, was it sent to every low-income parent who has filed taxes or who exactly is it being sent to? So our, our colleagues at Canada Revenue Agency has sent it to those who are in receipt of the Canada Child Benefit. Uh, so uh, over 800,000 would have received an email and 500,000 uh, would have received a, a letter because they're not registered through the direct deposit or email. Um, but it is those that are in receipt of the Canada Child Benefit, but it's not to say that they are eligible for the Canada Dental Benefit. It's just they could potentially be if they meet all the other criteria. And Marika, this would mean that potentially some low income families have not received the letter because they may not be applying or completing their income tax on a regular basis, correct? Correct. Because you need income tax completed to qualify for Canada Child Benefit. Yes. So again, Thank so the work is so important, you know, that folks do like uh, Dr. Roos and her team. I know Elaine's on the call today too with what they do to try to help families apply for income tax so then they can qualify for additional health benefits or government benefits. This is a very good question. Are foster parents eligible to apply? So uh, I would say uh, I'm not uh, legal expertise, but if they are the legal guardian of the child and are in receipt of the Canada child benefit for that child, uh, which is a key criteria, including all the other ones, they would be. Uh, However, I don't think that foster parents are uh, receiving uh, the Canada Child Benefit for the child they 
foster unless I am mistaken, but we can uh, loop back uh, with more clarity on that one. But it is a good question. Yeah. Just going back to uh, the, the question in regarding the EIA family, um, are you using the GP fee guide? Is that I think here is maybe I'll speak to this and then uh, Marika Kalita, please chime in as well. And first of all, a big thank you to Jehi and Daniela for pull, pulling this all together. So thank you, ladies. Um, you make us all look good, but you guys did all the hard work on the yes. slide. Um, so I, my, my interpretation is that if a child does not have public insurance, doesn't have EIA or NIHB, or IFH if they qualify, and you're normally using the GP fee guide, you would use the normal GP fee guide again for uh, billing services um, provided with parents paying from the Canada Dental Benefit. However, if the child has EIA coverage um, and social assistance, um, I would tend to defer to then for the additional treatment that, that will be paid through the Canada Dental Benefit to stick with the um, EIA fee guide. So I'll, one example is Access Downtown. We offered a 25% discount to families um, that can't afford to pay. And what we would do then again um, is we would be billing um, the 25% um, off um, as what we would be passing on to families that they would then pay with the funds they receive for Canada Dental Benefit. I think personally, I would have a problem then all of a sudden charging them 100% of the fee guide if we had previously um, agreed to a 25% discount. So, so thanks, hopefully that answered your question. So, yeah, and, and so basically, Maria. Bob, whatever they were doing before, continue yeah. to do that. I would agree, yeah. If I can just add, like the Canada Dental Benefit, and I, I, I know we've touched on it, is really for just to provide financial support, direct payment to the families to pay for oral health services for their um, uh, eligible, eligible child. So in theory, how, how oral health professionals are conducting their business uh, uh, ideally shouldn't change, uh, but it's really uh, to provide that financial support for those that, that, that are in need. So another question, is the benefit paid in, in one lump sum? So yes, it's one payment of up to $650 per uh, benefit period, uh, depending on uh, your salary um, that was shared in the deck. And another, um, do families apply before or after they receive the care? They, they can do one or the other. Uh, ideally, the, um, the benefit is to provide upfront payments to provide, again, that financial support to, to, to families to avoid uh, out-of-pocket expenses. Uh, understanding, however, that um, either you, uh, you forgot to apply or uh, you went to an urgency and, and you heard about the benefit afterwards. So as long as your uh, oral health appointment and services are incurred during the benefit period you can apply after or before. Right. Um, so we just have one minute, but um, I just want to thank everybody for coming and thank you very much to our presenters and panelists uh, for being here and answering all these questions for us. Um, I will be sending out the recording of the presentation to everybody that registered. So you'll be getting that shortly. Uh, we do have another presentation coming up in March on March 8th at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. And that one will be on the analysis of nutritional status, oral microbes and silver diamine fluoride treatment in preschool children in Manitoba. I'll send out more information about that one uh, at a later date. Um, and if you do have any further questions, I put my um, I, the question, where would we get handouts and posters from for Canada Dental Benefit, uh, Marika? 
So I'll share with uh, with you, Daniela, but we do have a stakeholder uh, kit where it has posters, Q and A's, uh, even social media, um, uh, an infographic if, if uh, our partners want to to um, to use that. So I'll, I'll share that, or it, it potentially is in the reference document, but I'll just we'll just make sure that it is included so um, that you have that along with. Uh, the uh, fact sheet on the, the uh, different um, languages, but there's like two different websites. So I'll just make sure, Daniela, that you have that and you can share with the audience. Perfect, that's great. Thank you very much. All right, everyone have a good day. Stay warm, especially those of us in Winnipeg. Bye-bye <laughs> everyone. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye, thank you. Thank you.